Good evening, class. Tonight we're going to learn how to use the revolve command as well as several other tools to make a uh, this item that you see on the screen. It looks like it is a turning item, machine skills level one from the NINS testing. It's a neat little item, so we're going to go ahead and make this inside inventor. First thing we do when we're an inventor is turn all our planes on. We pick the first item, hold the shift key down, pick the, the center point, right mouse button, and visibility. Then we go home, as I like to say, the little house right there, and we're ready to begin this. This is a one view drawing, we look at this and analyze it a bit, with some detail sectional cutout views. We have a detail of this guy, see detail A, and the detail of the other end, which is detail B. If we look at detail A and detail B, they look the same, to be honest. The only difference between the two ends is in detail A, there's a half 13 UNC 2A thread on this end and this other end has no thread on it. So a half 13, it's got 13 threads per inch, UNC, Unified National Course, 2A, it's a standard A for external thread. If it was B, it would be an internal thread. So it's basically a male thread versus a female thread. So this is an A thread. A for external, B for internal. When we look at the drawing itself, it looks like we also have a 3 quarter to 16 UNF, which is a fine thread, also a 2A. So we have two types of threads on this item. One end has one thread type, the other end right here, in the middle actually, not the end, with a different thread type. So the question is building this part. I'm going to go to the board for a minute so I can show the students in front of me what I'm doing. So the students online won't be able to see this, I'm sorry. What I'm literally drawing is the outline of the object. The outline of the object. So you see where my hand is moving. Now I'll turn it to crosshairs. The outline of the object only to the center not including any holes or any type of counter bores or counter sinks. In this case, these have counter sinks on the ends. Those are center points for the lathe is what they are. Uh, but we're going to build them as counter sinks. I'm sorry. Yeah, counter sinks. That's correct. Um, so when I go up here on the board, using my handy dandy, Pen. Those of you in the room, see that blue line I'm drawing? That is what you are going to draw. Literally, only the outline. So if we minimize this, I'll flip over to, let's say, a blank screen, like this one. You guys see that? No, I don't. I know the people in the video don't see this. I'm sorry. That is a very bad <laughs> drawing. It's a really awful outline of the part. Sorry. But that is what you guys are going to be building. So how to build it? Let's do that. We jump over to Inventor. Well, before we can jump over to Inventor, let's look at this thing. Uh, how long is it? This is ordinate dimensioning mixed up with diameters. If you look at it, it's, you've got a zero p condition over here. This is where the zero is, where my hand is wiggling around over here on the far right side. And then <clears throat> these are the incremental positions. We've got one, then there's another step at one and a half, then two and a half, three and a quarter, hmm, four, and three, three seven, so yeah, it's not three eight, so we're going to leave it as three seven on the button, 5.12.
So what's the length, guys? Well, yep, 5.12. You got it. The largest diameter, if we analyze this problem properly, we've got a 0.9 diameter, no medium. We've got a 0.625 diameter on this end. This is poorly dimensioned. You never do this type of dimensioning, by the way. It's probably done this way strictly because of these, and they were running out of room, so they crossed over. But try never to dimension like this. It's always minor dimension is on the inside, major dimensions are on the outside, like it is over here. Um, 2x diameter 0.6 plus or minus 0.015. That that are the that's these two diameters in here. I do find it a little challenging. I'm trying to see if maybe there's a note somewhere telling me the gaps. There we go. Unless otherwise specified, coaxial diameters plus or minus. I do not, see, oh there it is, hello, right there, 3x.12, see that? That tells me what this gap is here, tells me this gap here, and this gap here. Without this notation, I would not know the, the gap, the width of this, or the width of this, and the width of this. The only reason I know it's, that's correct, it's 3x. So three times is what that means. Okay? It's not a multiplication problem. Problem. It's just saying there's three of them. That's one way of identifying a quantity. You'll see 3x on a drawing. Another way, they might say quantity 3. But, you know, we want to be lazy in our typing. There's a lot of typing on this thing anyways. So we want to minimize how much we write. So that's why we use 3x. <clears throat> like here's 2x, number 4, center drill. So let's see what else. So we have an idea. So the thing is 5.12 long, but we have all these little steps along the way. So our goal, we have, each of us here has this drawing in front of us. We're going to basically, through this video, watch how this is built. First I go to the front view, that I assumed automatically. I didn't assume it that that's, that's the primary view. Whenever you're not given a view, like this thing really doesn't have a view, it's, it's a one view drawing. The front view is the view you draw as rule of thumb. <clears throat> Let's start on this end, or actually, <laughs> well yeah that's the zero position, so technically I need to start on that, this end, so I have to start here. We're going to go ahead and draw a line from here. We're going to go up across. I'm going to be a little sloppy in how I draw this up front. We're not going to worry about that, that chamfer that you see there. I'm just going to go to this point, <clears throat> move over a bit, and try to make sure they don't line up with each other. You see how I'm intentionally keeping the steps from lining up with each other. The reason for that is because, like for example, if I made the line across this line, a line up with this line, or this line, I can't move them, see, manually like this, and I need to. Up front, I need to do that. The one line missing is the one you need in the middle. That line, by the way, is the one that's going to be, what was that distance? I forgot. 5.12, that's right. That line I need in there, and I just dropped it, because that is going to be my, my center line. I'm going to drop in a few dimensions. I'm going to actually scooch this over just a little bit, so I can get some dimensions out of here. Constrain dimension. And let's see what we got here. Hmm. We're going to pick this object, pick this point, and I'm unable to make it give me a diameter. It wants to only give me the dimension from this line 
to here. So I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to give you a little trick. If you want your dimensions to appear as center lines, you actually have to throw in a center line. So that's literally what I'm doing right now. I'm going to throw it out here just so you see it. I'm going to make it relatively long. See that? Center line, just like in hand drawings, is a long dash, a short dash, long dash, short dash. This, just like I did it with a different project I did where I did a... Um, constraint for collinear. I'm going to pick this line, the center line, and pick my uh, base, my center of my object, and get the two to mate together. Now, when I drop in a dimension, after doing that, when I go to constraint and drop in a dimension, I pick the line and I pick the center line and I'll automatically get diameter as my option. Okay? So the smallest diameter is half an inch, so just 0.5. I don't care about the plus or minus business. That's for the detail drawing. You build the part in CAD perfectly. When you make the detail drawing for it, which is a future lecture, that's where I plug in and identify the plus or minus business. And that's for the person who's physically building it or the machine that's going to machine it. It's not for the drawing. So I've had students say, well, should I make it to the plus mark, which is 0.502? No. Do I make it to the minus mark, 0 .408, uh, 498, sorry? No. You make it exactly what it's supposed to be, the perfect position, which is half inch. You rinse and repeat all the diameters to make life less painful for yourself. I like to put in all of this information up front as much as I can. It helps with my ability to organize my thoughts. 0.75, that's three quarters, but make sure you're hitting the center lines. Just keep scooching over. Those are, so what are these? This is 0.37. That's diameter point, diameter 0.37 is this little neck over here. Do we have an answer on what the diameter neck is for those other two positions? This position and this position, or is I believe they wait to the default position on the far right side. Mm, see where my hand is going? 2x diameter 0.6. See that? So this you notice how I put it in between the 0.5 and the 0.625 because its dimension is 0.6. It's in between those two. Because that is what it tells me. So I'm going to drag these out a bit. This is going to be a very complicated looking drawing. With all these diameters. Then we keep on going. What's the next one? That's dimension on the other end. 0 0.9. That's 0 0.9. And then that also drops down. Try not to have it connect with anything. Now notice what it's doing. It's giving me center lines for some reason. The reason for that is that I have moved the center lines up here. To fix that, I click on these. I hold my control key down to pick all of them. And something like this happens. Then let go and turn off center lines. And they go back to being normal lines. So nothing to worry about. You don't have to delete those lines. 
So if the question ever comes up, well, can I convert an object that exists on a drawing into a center line or a construction line? The answer is yes. I can take a line and turn it into another type of line and turn it back. So if I find that I have a construction line that I would like to use as an actual line, just flip it. If I have a center line that later on I'd like to use as an actual line, just flip it. And it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and finish dimensioning this side. Point 0.9, I think, was the dimension there of the gnarled part. Neural part. Other words, I've heard it pronounced both ways. Canerald. Okay, what what's this one again? Both of those are the same. So this is an example where it's okay if I take this object. Whoops, made a escape. Sorry. Take this object. Hold my control key down. Take this object and make the two of them align because they carry the same dimension. Next, we've got this object down here. Let's get this over here. I'm intentionally just stepping them whatever which way I want. Oh, did I make the same mistake again? Yes, I did. Uh, that's easy to fix. Highlight them all, go up here and turn off center line. Done. Go ahead and dimension this. This to center is something. What is it? Hmm. There it is, 0.75. There we go. 0.75. So that's 0.75. This inner shape, which is actually bounced this high. Make sure you pick the center line for dimensioning. Otherwise, it will not see it as a diameter. That diameter is 0.37. Up, I automatically said 375. Sorry about that. 0.37. Then we've got this dimension from here to the center. And that's that small piece. This, this item right here. Now that item tells us right here it's a 0.5, so that's a half inch. That's a 0.5 dimension right there. So that's at the half inch mark. So our lengths are defined, very complicated looking drawing. Now, I'm sorry, not our lengths, our diameters are defined. Now we need to identify the lengths. So we go back here, this is where all those ordinate positions come into play. The ordinate positions. So let's see. This, hey, why did you change locations? There you go. The first object is an inch away first cut is an inch away from the zero position. So when we go to dimensioning, it's okay if it's an actual dimension. That's not a big deal. For, for ten, oof. You see what it did? See how far over it jumped? That happened because the actual number is really tiny, which means we probably should constrain the overall length before we do anything else. Because there might be a, this might be, 
a bit of an issue. Let's find out. Yeah, you can tell. Notice where the 5.12 mark is. And notice where my object ends. <laughs> so I, I made a mistake. So I got to go fix it. I did not end my object at the end point of my five and a quarter inch mark. So I'm actually going to work backwards and come down here. So I can get these positions in correctly. Got to work backwards. I'm going to dimension this, uh, the gaps. Let's do the gaps first because they're in there. This to this is a gap of 0.12. This to this is a gap of 0.12. And do I need to type that in or can I just pick the other object? Pick the other object. Because then it's a function of 0.12. The function of x business, that's what I did. Because I am lazy. Recorded for life. Like this. It's called being efficient, people. It's okay. I like to call it lazy because I think that's a good way to think. <laughs> Who is it? Gates and um, Jobs both said they like hiring lazy programmers. That's what they meant by lazy programmers. So. Let's drag this out. Let's drag this out a bit. We've got our first, our longest position is identified, which is the full length of the part. This position needs to be identified from the end. And that, from here to the end, is 4.37. Did I pick the right spot? I have a sneaking suspicion I did not. I picked 4.37 from this edge, but over here it's showing the 4.37 from this edge. So my number is wrong. I have to delete that dimension and put it in the correct spot. So that's something you will have to pay attention to, especially on a complicated piece. 4.37. And this isn't necessarily complicated in a huge way, but it's dimensionally challenging to look at. Then we have this one from here to the end, and this dimension is 5.12, right there, 4.37, right there, 3.25, right there. The next position is 2.50, which is on the other side of the, the neural. And that's from here to the end, 2.5, there you go. So patience is something you'll have to have when you drop these dimensions, so you make sure you pick them right. Yeah, you're laughing at me. Yeah, I know. Yes, we all like that. <laughs> I resemble that remark. Okay, so we have 2.5, 1.5, that's nice. So that's from here to here, 1.5. Yeah, and it keeps jumping the dimensions out, which I do find annoying, but, you know, I'll get through it. And then the last dimension, which is the shortest dimension, one inch right here, from here to here. By doing it this way, I get a clean, that my part doesn't get all odd looking like it did the first time when I started with the smallest dimension. I started with the largest dimension instead. Now this thing is fully defined. Uh-oh, no it's not. It says two dimensions needed. So let me go home. No, 
I know. Don't go anywhere. And let's zoom in and see what on earth is not defined. Everything looks purple, which is what we want, or dark blue, or whatever color you see. It's not green. So I'm not quite sure what's not defined. And to be honest, in the grand scheme of things, it's okay if your sketch is not fully defined. Some people obsess over it. I've not, because it hasn't seemed to matter from a um, outcome perspective. So I don't necessarily worry about that. This object, oh, I, I bet you, not that I would take anybody's money, but I bet it's the endpoints of the center line. If I lock them in, how much you want to bet? Now it's only one dimension needed. So I bet if I lock the other end of the center line in, fully constrained. There you go. Now, did it matter that I locked the center line in? No. That's an example of where getting it fully constrained does not matter. Okay, guys? Next, jump to 3D model. Create and instead of extruding, this is where we revolve. Now, revolve is a beautiful tool. It makes absolutely gorgeous objects that are symmetrical and round. Any cups that you have, like uh, my iced tea cup up here that I have, okay, I can make this cup using that command. In fact, this would be a cool cup to draw, especially the ends on the side and you, I build it as a solid object, and then boom, take the inside out using the shell command. And it literally look like this cup, okay? But Revolve is, is a very useful tool for anything that is round and symmetrical, 100%. Like your cup, the ceramic cup you have at your station, perfect. So we're gonna pick Revolve, and it finds the center automatically because I gave it a center. If I didn't, I have to define the axis. If I had no center line in it, I'd have to find a center line for it. And a center line can be anything. It doesn't have to be an actual center line. You, I can pick the edge of the object, just in case I want to be really odd for some reason. I'm going to pick this as my axis just for fun, and look what I get. Notice that? Yeah, yeah. Why? Because I picked the edge of it and boom, it wants to go around that edge. Obviously, that's not what we want. So we cancel. And it knows, because I had used an actual center line, it knows to presume to use that center line. If I didn't have a center line, again, I'd have to pick something. When I hit OK, voila, I have my thing about. The rest is editing the elements of it to what they want. Something is wrong on the end. Something is, oh wait, well maybe. I don't know. Let me look. Let me look at those dimensions again. Okay, I guess that's not wrong. From here to here is one inch. I guess it's so, it's so busy here, it looked like it was wrong. So it's me, it's not you, it's me. So the first thing I want to do is throw in this, this uh, chamfer. There's a couple of them, in fact. There's one over here, and there's one over here. So we're just going to scooch down the line and see what we got. So let me zoom out a bit, zoom in a bit. Under Modify, in the 3D Model tab, you have Chamfer. All you got to do is pick what kind you want. Oh, this is 45 degrees, 40, so they're all 45 degrees, so it's easy. So the distance is 0 0.03, 0 0.03, very tiny distance. Then I just pick that edge and it makes the chamfer. I just hit apply. When I hit apply, it stays in the command. When I hold my middle wheel down, I can then scooch over to the next item I want to revolve. Uh, um, I'm sorry, chamfer. This one is a distance of 0.06. 
And I think, yes, it's this one right here. And then I hit apply. If you hit OK, it exits the command, then you have to go back and get to it. Now if I go in here, the next two chamfers are these, and they are 0.03 because this one's 4x.03. Yep, this is 0.03, this one, little one over here, and these two. So, I'm going to cancel out of this. Because they're all the same, see this last one right here? I'm going to go ahead and edit that chamfer. And I'm going to go ahead and pick the other three elements that need to be chamfered. And hit OK. So I can go and edit an existing chamfer. I can just click on it, right mouse button, edit feature, or click on the feature itself. Whoops. Click on the feature itself. There we go. And get the same option to edit it. Those are the two ways to get there. So there's a, those are those shapes. Now we've got these things where this one right here has a 0.7516 UNF threading on it. Under modify is a thing called, sorry, hold on. Modi I'm sorry, under modify is an item called thread. You can make internal threads or external threads. The pictures show internal, but you can do both types. When I click thread, first thing it wants to know is what face. Let me make sure I pick the correct face. It's this guy we're going to do first. Notice how it visually attempts to display full length across the object. Specifications. Three quarters. It automatically presumes three quarters because it's a diameter of three quarters. Designation, though, you have a variety of standard configurations on threading with three quarters. So these are based on standards. They're not uh, made up. They actually exist. If you ever want to find them, you can search online. Eventually, when it wants to show it to me. There we go. And we look at threading designation. You have all types of threads. They usually have charts. There you go. All types of charts out there that talk about threading. In this room, we have a chart on that end for decimal chart. We have a lot of different items. This is a nomenclature on it. What does it mean? So you can look that up. So 3 quarter, 16 is what they want. Standard right-handed thread. If I had a faucet and I'd have two two-handle faucet for a hot and a cold, they'd have reverse threads on them so they open and close correctly. So there is a left-hand and a right-handed thread. They actually do make both. Class is the quality of the thread. Two is fine. It's standard. One is one pass to make that thread. Two is two passes to make that thread. Three, which is more expensive, would be three passes to make that thread. So they're cleaner threads. It's an ANSI thread type. Uh, none of these other ones. But can you see? Look at that. Looking at fasteners is a fascinating conversation, which we will not discuss today, but there it is. There's a lot of information with fasteners. When you hit apply, there it is. See? Next. Is there another thread? Isn't there another thread? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. This one. This one has a thread down here. That's a half inch thread, half 13. Standard thread, 2A, right-handed, hit apply. Let's move over. Remember how they say righty-tighty, lefty-loosey? That's what they're talking about when they right-hand, left-hand. Let's see, any other threading in here?
the three quarters. Let me zoom out. Uh, if I can. Hold on. <laughs> okay. There we go. I only see the three quarters, sixteen, and the hat finch. So we're set. Those are the only two threads here. There's this neural here. And some people are like, well, do they have something for that? I've yet to find it, so no. You can always create an image to drop on here to show that X mark. They don't have it as a standard item. They've got split, draft, shift, chamfer. Jump into modify, no, there's nothing there. So that one you're identifying the drawing. It does not cut the thread for you. That I'll teach you in a future class, how to actually make a cut thread. It just gives you the facsimile that something is different. The next thing is here, we've got some countersinks that are on the ends of this. Those are actually the centers for the spindle when they actually machine this part. Because there's little end, end pins that hold the piece in place while it's spinning. That's what those are. And they're, they're 60 degrees. They did not give us the length of the length of the end because it really doesn't matter. So it's like a drilled hole. And then they have a reference that it's like about a quarter inch. I zoom in on this. So it looks like it's about a quarter inch diameter as far as this diameter. It's in a 60 and 60 degree angle flute. So let's see what we can do there. If I click on this face, I want a center mark. I have one, so I'm good. I'm going to go to modify, go to my hole. I know where I want it, which is right there in the middle. That's the easy part. The direction I want it to go in is into the part, so that way it knows to, to go in there. It is a countersink hole. And with an angle of 60, and the outer diameter of a quarter inch. What we don't know is this dimension. Obviously, two cannot be the number. So it must be smaller than two. If the outer value is a quarter inch, the inner value has to be less than a quarter inch. Just mathematically, it has to. <clears throat> they didn't give us that information. It's just a center drill. Because they're standard ones that they use, and it depends on what kind of uh, end you're using. So let's just say for the sake of con conversation, it's an eighth of an inch hole that's in there. Okay. Do we want it to go all the way through? No, nah, I don't think so. We want it to just go through partially. How partial? <laughs> because they don't tell us. It has to be greater than the depth of this cut, but obviously less than through the part. How about that for a vague answer? So let's presume got to move this over a bit that we make it instead of 1 inch if we type in a quarter see that so it's a quarter inch deep that looks about right that looks good when i compare it to this drawing We'll tell the customer, but honestly, that, that depth doesn't actually matter from a functional perspective. When we hit OK, there it is. It's in there. Done. That's how difficult that is. Rinse and repeat on the other side. What's nice? Ooh, did I miss something? Yes, I did. What did I miss on this end? I saw a raw end, and that made me stop, because more often than not, it's not. So what we need is another chamfer, 0.06 chamfer, 
Now, should I create another chamfer? Don't I have a 0.6 chamfer already? Isn't this one 0.6 chamfer? If I hit edit, yeah, it is. So I just add a chamfer to an existing one. Don't populate this thing with a ton of chamfers, I would recommend. If they're common, just do it once and edit it once. Makes life so, so much easier. So now, back to the hole. I'm going to pick this face. But I don't have a center mark, so what can I do to get a center mark? How do I achieve that? Up front it would be easier if I just went ahead and shared something. We're going to share a sketch, just like we did last time with a different drawing. Okay, so we're going to make our sketch visible so I can use it. Then I go to the whole wizard. It defaults to the counter bore I already made with all the criteria that it's already been used. Now when I pick that, the only question is direction. Hmm. See how it won't let me change the direction? That's annoying. I need to add a direction. It won't give that give me that option. So let me see if I pick my center mark first and go to hole. No, won't give me direction. Interesting. Yeah, that's not what you see how it punched it on the side that way? Undo. Let me pick the face and pick hole. And pick that center. Won't well, let me change that position. There we go. Now the question is, can I drag you there? And yes, I can. Did you notice that? Then I can pull it back, look at it, and hit OK. And we're done. Then I can turn that sketch off again. There you see it down there as well. And that is your part. The most complicated work in making this part is getting those dimensions nailed. It's going across and the diameters. That's where all the work is. And this is the end of this lecture. <laughs>